Hey guys, Romy here. So yeah, I'm telling you, I was on the cusp of not, and I repeat not, reviewing this show because I have no desire to anymore. But I saw that, you know, enough of you guys watch, you liked, so I, I'm just going to have to keep doing this. I'm doing this for you. Now, this is If Loving You Is Wrong, Season 3, Episode 11, The Porch Light. Now, the episode, it starts off with Natalie, Esperanza, and uh, Marcy. They're still in front of Randall's house. Well, they're still in front of the house. They're still kind of laughing at the picture from Eddie. I said, great. Inside the house, Lucian has to battle and even, like, borderline punch Eddie in order to get the gun away from him. Because Eddie's like, I'm going to kill you guys. And... Larry and Randall are cackling. First off, Randall's upset because, oh, you shot, you shot my couch. You shot my couch. I'm thinking, what? Larry's over there gawking like, ah, ha, 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 ah, ha. Yeah, that's funny, man. I can't believe it. Oh, you're a feisty one. I like that. I'm thinking, what is wrong with this dude? I'm sorry, but Larry's going to have to go. Larry is definitely going to have to go sooner rather than later. Now, once everyone starts to leave, we see that we see that Esperanza's new boo, Eddie's arch nemesis. What's the boy's name? What's his name again? Anyway, so once his face shows up and to go and see Esperanza. That's his, Steve, oh, God, Steven. Anyway, so Steven, he goes, he's like, oh, I heard about the whole Eddie thing. I'm thinking, how'd you hear about, Lucian, did you do that? Lucian, did you do that? Anyway, Steven talks to Saranza and she talks, tells him that, yeah, it's crazy what happened. And I do have the picture. He's like, can I see it? I said, can you what? He wanted to see it. He saw it. He was cackling. He was like, oh, this is amazing. But they go to them because... Steven, he's still interested in Esperanza. He still wants to pursue something with Esperanza. She talks about how, look, that's not happening. And anyway, um, you can't come back to my house. But he said, why don't we do this? If we leave the porch light on, or is it off, then you can come inside. It, it was some type of mess like that. Because then they got on the phone. And I said, I really don't care. So we get to it, back into the house, Lucian's house. And Ian is there. Ian is there. And Ian lets Lucian know that, look, Kelly is screwed. Kelly is screwed because I don't think I can represent her anymore. Remember, his firm represents Travis's whole family. So that's income minus Kelly, who doesn't even have a job. She can't even afford to pay for all the services that have been rendered to her so far. Now, Lucian is just like, look, she's going to have to find, potentially find another lawyer, okay? All right. Now, Kelly talks to Natalie for 2.5 seconds. She feels kind of weird because she's just kind of like, <sighs> almost feels like it, it didn't even happen. You can tell that she's not remorseful because why would she? This man, he assaulted her, raped her, terrified her, endangered her, did all this mess. So she doesn't feel any type of way. So I said, okay, great. Now back at Esperanza's house, she goes in. She invites Steven over. He's allowed to come in. The door's open. She's wearing her necklace. She looks good. Uh, that's all you need to know. Esperanza looks good. She looks good. She looks good. And then she does the whole, she wants to go and control Steven. So she was like, take off your clothes. Do this. Do that. I said, that's great. It's really great, but I don't care. I don't care in the least. So we're going to move forward because this was a couple of minutes and he went down on her. And that's all that really mattered from that scene. Next up, we see... Brad, well, this is funny. Alex was trying to talk to her husband. Brad's over it. He gave her the cold shoulder of life. Because remember, Brad, uh, he's just kind of like, yeah. Yeah, I believe that you didn't do it, but mm, I don't really trust you. Now, what happens? There was some stupid dialogue about, oh, did you save me some food? I'm thinking, save me some food? You're lucky still in this house. <laughs> that, that would have been my response. Brad looks over it. Brad's just over the relationship. He doesn't trust his wife. He doesn't trust his wife because why? She's still lying to him. She is still, dang, I've never had this many. I haven't had this many zits in years. What is going on? My face. Anyway. 
as Sarans and Steven are done. So now it's time for Steven to go. They're going to have to go and keep this on the low because they can't let anyone know she had fun. Um, they're going to have fun at work because with all the messes been going on with Eddie. You should leave them next time. No. Then maybe there'll be a next time. Maybe there won't. I really don't care. Side note, I watched about 10 minutes of the revamped House of Pains and it was funny. I remembered why I used to watch that show. It's like, this is, on a Friday night, this can work. This really can. Anyway, Marcy, she gets a call from her dude, Larry, um, from Ian. And what happened here? Uh, sure. When? Oh, yeah, because Ian's yeah. still, Do you have the financing? remember, he is buying the house. He wants the house, and apparently he doesn't need any finance, and he can just do it all in cash. I said, Jesus. Wow. Sidebar, Marcy needs to bring up to him, so how well do you know Larry? Because Larry's on some, no, 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 something about him. I was like, I know things can get wild, and things can get weird. He can be into some weird stuff, but that's as far as it'll go. Next thing we know, Marcy calls Larry, but Randall picks up. And when Randall picks up, Marcy was like, wait, how could you tell him that I was pregnant? Now, that gave Randall all the confirmation that he needed. So, she was just like, yeah, and this is Brad's baby. I said, oh, Lord, here goes the mess, the continued mess. Randall was pissed. He's looking at Larry like, dude, now he gets this big bucket to fill it up. Not even, maybe he filled it like 10, 15%. I'll, I'll say 15%. That's how much he filled it up and then threw it on Larry. But it was more than enough because he was drenched. It was like, oh, what? What? He's like, get out. You you lied. You said that uh, Marcy was pregnant and then you took it back. But she is. I just talked to her. She is. So then he was like, get out. And we you know less dramatic. But it's supposed to be as menacing. So I have to do that because we don't take Randall seriously. Now, once Larry got into his car... Mind you, Brad's outside watching all this mess. Like, <laughs> this is a mess. Once that happened, uh, Larry calls... What's her name? What's her name? Larry calls uh, Marcy or Marcy calls Larry. And Marcy was just like, so Larry, you're fired. Because you went and exposed the fact that I'm pregnant to, to your friend. You're supposed to have my back, not your friend. I'm the one that's supposed to be paying you, remember? Even though I'm thinking, she doesn't even... Ooh, that commission was going to pay for the divorce. Got it. Got it. Now, Randall, because Randall's messy, he needs to go over to Brad and piss off Brad. So, Randall's trying to go and make it seem like, oh, oh, congratulations. So, you're going to be a daddy for the third time, right? Or is it fourth? Who knows? But Marcy... Oh, what about Marcy? She told me she's pregnant with your baby. She did? Yeah. So, yeah. I said, oh, God, Brad, really? We're playing along with this, but it's Randall. So, yeah, play along with this for 2.5 seconds. Things were going well. You could tell Randall was irked. But then Randall flipped it. He said, well, you know who told me? Because I think Brad asked, did Alex tell you? Or something like that. And he was like, yeah, when? She came over when you left. When? I don't have a time frame for when she goes and dibs and dabs over here. Regardless of what she tells you, she still comes over here. And the, ooh. And I said, Brad, you're not believing this. You're not believing this, right? So what about your baby? Um. So Marcy told you that it's, I mean, so Alex told you that it's mine. Really? Brad knows or at least I thought Brad knew. Brad's weird. I get it. He doesn't trust his wife. So that's why Randall got into his skin. Because Brad was like, you need to get off my property. You need to get off. And I said, that's a sidewalk. Get off where? <laughs> but the main issue is that Brad, again, he loves Alex. But he doesn't trust her. So even though he knows he can't trust Randall, he still kind of felt like, mm, just on the off chance that Alex... It's on some BS. Mm -mm. Now, we see Natalie, who is a rock star right now. Where's Joey, by the way? Who's a rock star, by the way? Sh no, not Joey, Natalie. Natalie, she gets woken up by Lucian. Lucian's getting ready for uh, work. He already got the kids off to school and all of that. So, shout out to Lucian. He's the best. He's going to take Kelly. He's going to take Kelly. Natalie wants to go and say goodbye. We see Kelly, and Kelly's like, 
Oh my God, it's a beautiful morning. It's a beautiful day. You would have never thought that I went and killed someone. I mean, that she killed someone. And Lucian's just looking at this like, okay, she needs to get it together. But once Natalie talks to her and it really starts to sink into Kelly that you're going down to the um, police department so that they can go and get your testimonial and who knows what's going to happen. So that's when it really sunk in for Kelly and Kelly's like, uh oh, and like, oh, and now she's crying. Now she's like, who's going to get justice? And I said, I don't know who's going to get justice for you. It was supposed to be Ian, but mm. so Ian finally talks to Larry, who's all discombobulated because like, oh, such a wild night out. Well, Ian's looking at him like, dude, you own this firm. You're supposed to get it together. You're supposed to be getting ready for a press conference. Travis's, uh, Travis's family's calling because of he got shot. It was like, oh, what? Yeah, you have to take care of that. Oh, oh my God. I just see my cough. Coffee. Okay, got it. Now, this whole exchange went to trash because once Ian let be known that look, the problem is I'm representing Kelly, his ex-girlfriend, the one who shot him. What? Yeah. And the worst part is this is a cover up. She didn't do it. I checked the system. I checked. He went to her house 46 times in one day. They got the cell phone. They also showed that he went and acted like he was her husband. You messed with all of her accounts, drained all of her money. And there's more and there's more and there's more. Larry, the trash man that he is, says, we're going to bury it. We're going to bury it. You're going to bury it, right? Because regardless of what you think, I'm the one that owns this place. So we're, I'm, you're going to bury this for me. It doesn't matter if she's guilty or not. You're doing my job. But I'm saying, Ian, 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 please do not. Ian, please. Ian, please. Please, man. Please don't do it. Now, Kelly, I, I really, I, I'm rooting for Ian. I feel like he's going to do the right thing. I really do. Now, Lucian, he takes Kelly down to the station. And Kelly's concerned. She's like, Why don't you, can you stay with me? Can you stay with me? He said, sure. But make sure you don't say anything until your lawyer comes. Now, he already knows that Ian may not be coming. So, they're going to have to get her a different lawyer. It really doesn't matter because an officer comes in and says that she's under arrest. She says, oh, I'm not going to talk. No, you're under arrest, honey. You're under arrest. Oh, well. So that was it. Please like, comment, subscribe. Come back 